Check one, two, just making sure you can see me and hear me okay. I think everything's working okay here. Richard is here. Hey, Richard, G is here. Hello. Okay, let me know if you can hear my guitar okay, if you can hear my voice okay. Jim is here. Hello, Jim. Nice to see you. Joel is here. Rasta is here. Noah is here. Very nice. So glad you all could make it. This is great. Uh, Jordan is here. Very, very nice. Uh, Ronald is here. Mike Rudolph is here. How you doing, Mike? Very cool. Paul is here from California. Thinley is here. How you doing, Thinley? Brandon, Oregon. Perfect. Duke is here. Thank you, everybody. This is awesome. Uh, R. Lorenz is here. Today we're going to be doing, first of all, welcome to another Monday Guitar Motivation. I apologize, I wasn't able to do anything last week. I wound up being really busy. Uh, Bruno is here from Italy. Hey, Mark. Mark from Janesville. Uh, so here we are. So I thought what would be fun today is show you something that I'm sure you've heard a billion times, uh, but look at another side of it, which is uh, what we're going to be doing today is looking at uh, Day Walker is here. How you doing, bud? Um, we're going to be looking at Thunderstruck by ACDC. Now, before we get started here, I just want to again say hello. Kid is here. Richard is here. Very cool. Trading Merrick is here. Uh, Dippin is here. Watching from Nepal. Very cool. Ethan is here from India. Very cool. All right. Awesome. Well, everybody, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, hello to everybody. Thank you so much for taking time out to hang out with me. This is great. Uh, so what we're going to do today, if you don't know, I'm a huge, huge ACDC fan. I love ACDC. I've always loved them. One of my favorite bands of all time. Uh, Thunderstruck is not one of my favorite songs. Maybe it was at some point, but after hearing it 385,000 times, it, it just isn't anymore. But I thought it would be a great song to talk about today because if you've never learned it before, it's actually a lot of fun to play. And really, the, the most important thing I want to talk about today is the interaction between Angus's part and Malcolm's part, which I think is just really, really cool. And it, um, it's depicted very well in this song, how you can see how dramatically different what they're doing. Uh, but yet, the interaction is just really amazing. So, uh, Tony is here watching from Connecticut. Very cool. Trading Merrick is here from India. Very nice. Hey, everybody. So nice to see you. Slip Boy is here from Malaysia. Let's see here. What does this one say? Paul says, hey, Steve, how's it going? Taking a mental health day off from work. Very nice. It's nice to do that sometimes. Absolutely. Okay. Very cool. Karen is here from Nepal as well. Wow, this is awesome. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off by just talking about uh, the main riff to this song. And uh, again, for those of, of you that may have never played this before and you're learning how to do some stuff, it's really fun to play this. And um, what we're going to do is just talk about a couple of different ways that you can approach this. And then we're going to get to really the meat and potatoes of this conversation, which is Malcolm's part, which I think is, I've always loved looking at uh, Malcolm's guitar parts because they're just, they, they're, they're kind of the glue that holds the songs together for the most part, oftentimes. So let's go ahead and start off. Let me switch my camera angle. So what we've got here, and I can only play a little bit of this because I'm going to wind up getting blocked from YouTube or whatever, I'm sure. So uh, what I want to show you here is this. You go to four and you go to seven on your B string, and you'll notice I'm using my first finger and my pinky for this. And what you're going to do is you're going to play zero, and then you're going to play the rest of these. Now, there, there are a couple of different ways you can approach picking this. Now, I'm going to start off by doing it the way Angus does, which is picking all of the notes. So I'm going to play zero with an up strum, and then the set, or the four, excuse me, with a down strum. So I have, and then I'm going to go back to zero, and go to seven. So I'm going zero, just to start this thing off, and then it's four, zero, seven, zero, four, zero, seven, zero. So if you think about it, it, the downbeat is the four. So you're going. Okay. But the song actually starts with that one up strum, but you really want to start it with that up strum because if you start it on a down, everything's going to be kind of opposite with the picking. So start with that up. Then all you do is move up to five. Five. 
and then you go back. Okay, so again, if you think about it, it's just 4070 over and over and over, then 5080 over and over and over. It's just the song starts with that one zero, and I, you know, I've had students before that they try and start with that one zero with a down, and then the seven, and the, the all the downbeats are on the up strum, which feels very, very awkward. So either number one, leave that first zero off, or number two, if you do start with that zero, start with an up strum or an up pick. Okay. So if that makes sense, your downbeat is. If you do start with an up strum. Or excuse me, with that zero, start with an upstrom. Okay. Now we're gonna get into the again. You can watch this video as many times as you need to. I'm just not gonna play a lot of this because I don't want it to get muted. Hopefully, it won't get muted. But um, the other thing that you could do with this is you could play by doing pull-offs. So you could do four and then do it as a pull-off, and then seven and do that as a pull-off as well. So you could go. Hey, Ricky. Ricky says, thanks. I appreciate the time you take. I appreciate your being here, Ricky. Thank you so much. So you see what I'm doing there is I'm doing, I'm picking with a down and then doing a pull off. Now in order to do that, I have to keep those other strings quiet, right? So I'm kind of touching all those other strings around there, which I would always do anyway when I'm playing single strings. Okay. So I'm touching all of these strings up here with this hand, and I'm touching this first string with my first finger, uh, just barely touching that like that. And between my first finger and my pinky, I keep kind of touching that first string so you don't hear it. It doesn't start, you know, doesn't start making noise like that. You see that? So you could do all of those as pull-offs. but control all those strings around there while you're doing that. And one thing to always remember is, you know, you and I only have a limited amount of time, so I am playing it a little faster than I would like to, but always remember when you're breaking things down, play it nice and slow, figure out not only what the fretting hand is supposed to be doing, you know, what fingers you're using, what frets you're playing on, that sort of thing, but think about the picking. Are you playing it with a down or are you playing it with an up? And, and it's okay if you do it differently than I do, but just understand why you're doing it that way um, so you can, you can continuously do it the same way. A lot of times when we play, we spend so much time thinking about what the fretting hand is doing, but we don't really think about the importance of the down pick or the up pick or something like that to, um, to be able to repeat it the same way over and over and over. Because if you're used to doing something with down picks, you don't want it all of a sudden thrown off and now it's on an up strum because it's going to feel very, very awkward, right? So be, just be aware of all of those parameters. And then the last thing is the control, string control. As you play, you know, if you're using distortion like I am, that sort of thing, learn to have string control so you're not getting noise from the strings that you don't want. It seems like kind of a side thing, but it's really not. It's just as important as the actual lick or riff or whatever it is that you're learning because it's what's going to make it sound correct or professional or whatever word you want to put in there is really learning how to control all of those things. Okay. So as I play this, I'm doing these pull offs and again, I'm laying on these strings here and I'm controlling that first string. So as I do this, now the other way that you could do this is you could do the entire thing with just uh, hammer-ons and pull-offs. Okay, you could do that as well. It might be easier for you, it might be harder for you. For some people it's very hard to, um, hello, uh, Musa, I'm not sure if that's how you say your name, Musa Kamara. Um, I apologize, but hello to you if I didn't say that correctly. Okay, so th what makes this a little bit harder is you've got to have, you know, strong enough hammer on and pull off skills if you'd rather play it that way. Remember, my job isn't to, I don't care whether you play it exactly the way that Angus plays it. I'm more concerned with you playing it the way that feels best to you. Okay. And if you like the way it sounds a certain way, then, and you like it way it feels, I think that's, that's wonderful. So those are your three choices. You're going to pick everything. Okay. Or you're going to do those pull-offs. 
or you're gonna do it all hammer-ons and pull-offs. Okay, so just remember the first pattern is four and seven, and the second pattern is five and eight, okay? Now, when we move into the next part here, what I'm gonna do is just kind of roll across what the numbers are. You'd be still using the same technique, but you'd be doing this. So what you're doing there is you're gonna go 12, 10, 9, 10, back to the nine. So you have, and again, you can watch this video as many times as you need to. But when you get down there, what we're gonna do is drop down, So notice how I went down to seven and nine. And you can just do this without the hammer-ons and pull-offs or whatever it is you're doing. All the zeros, just, just get used to the pattern. Now at this point is where it changes because you've got to jump over. You're not going to go back to the seven. You're going to jump over to the five and seven. So kind of listen to this rhythm as I do this. And then notice how I jump over to the four and five and do the same thing. And that's how I'm thinking about it in my head as I play this. Let me move over just a little bit there. There we go. And then all I'm gonna do is gonna keep, go, uh, I'm gonna keep doing four and five until I run out of time here. So I have. And that's how you play that. Get, get the, the idea in your brain before you worry about all the zeros and stuff. Just get the idea of playing this whole sequence and then jumping over and then jumping over again. Jump, jump. And if that makes sense, just get that straight in your head and then start adding in your you know, whatever it is, however you'd like to play that. So that's the, the uh, Angus part that most people wind up learning. And again, it's a lot of fun. If you've never done it before, it is absolutely worth taking a look at. Okay, so now what we're gonna do though, is we're gonna move over. I'm gonna go to a bit cleaner tone. And we're gonna start looking at this Malcolm part that's super cool, it's happening underneath there. So, now in order to play this, you it, it's a groove thing where, you know, when you learn the Angus part, it's, it's a technical thing. You know, you got to memorize all these different frets and, and all this sort of thing. When you're doing this, it's pretty cool. Where you're trying to get this kind of groove happening here. And it's basically just a power chord. You're just playing this B power chord. Okay. But what you're going to do here is, let me just scratch for you so you can kind of hear this. That's really kind of how the rhythm is going for Malcolm. So if you understand that the groove is coming from that strum, so you're not trying to you know, do stuff like this, it's all in the flow of your, your hand when you strum. Now it's gonna change a little bit once we start playing, but if you just get used to that, and you might even just play along with the song, just scratching. Right? Just kind of getting that groove down. Now once you get that, let's let's refine this a little bit more. Now I, I honestly believe that the, the premise is the same, and I'm gonna show you that, but obviously the strings that you hit here and there are gonna change a little bit because it's a groove. Always remember, sometimes when you're playing songs, it's not just about the accuracy of hitting the right strings, it's about developing the groove. So if you were Malcolm and you're playing this on stage, you're not just focusing on hitting, you know, the fourth string versus the third string or something, as much as you are trying to develop the groove. And if you would hit the fourth and the third strings together versus separate or something, I, I think it matters less in this instance. Certainly, you know, if you're doing something like this, you know, it's important that you're hitting the right strings and, and that sort of thing for sure. But I think with Malcolm's, it, it comes down to more trying to develop that groove a little bit, okay? So if you think about it, what we're gonna do here is I'm just gonna kinda show you what I'm doing here. And then what I'd love for you to do this week is try and work on this a little bit, uh, developing this and play along with the tune. Jump on YouTube or Spotify or whatever and look up the tune and just start trying to practice this. So what we're gonna do here is I'm taking this B power chord. <laughs> So what I'm going to be doing is kind of moving back and forth between 
kind of palm muting the fifth string and kind of strumming these strings. But again, because it's kind of a feel thing, it's not going to be one million percent accurate. And I'm not looking for, you know, a, a metal kind of dialed in kind of thing. It's not that. It's it's this kind of... You know, kind of groove. So let's take a look at this. So what I'm doing in the beginning is I'm going to take these two notes here. So I'm playing the fourth and third strings, and then I'm dropping down to the fifth string. So I'm going down, up, down. Now, again, this is kind of what I'm talking about, and I'm not trying to confuse you. I just want you to think honestly about this. So as I play, if I had gone and hit fifth up on these two, and then fifth again, or fifth up on the third string in this one, da-da-da is what I'm looking for. You see the difference? If I'm going, or I'm going, or I'm going, if one of those things happens by accident while I'm playing this, it's okay. Because the most important thing is that I'm getting da da da, da da da. That's what I want is that rhythm. So I'm shooting for fourth string, third string, for, excuse me, fourth string, third string, first string. But if I would hit some other combination, as long as this motion of the pick stays the same, I'm good. I'm going to be fine, okay? So I hope that's not confusing to you, but it's really important to understand that because there's a realism to playing. It's not just frets and, you know, tab and things like that. You've got to figure out how to make this work. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back and I'm going to strum these two strings right here, the fourth and third strings. Okay? Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the first, or the fifth string, excuse me, and I'm going to do these two strings, and they're going to wind up being on the up strum. So I'm strumming third and fourth at the same time. Now, if you, if you work on your groove with your hand, let me try this nice and slow. See, they're going to wind up being on up, so I'm not doing that on purpose. It's that if I was just keeping with this flow that's moving, that's what's going to happen. So it's down, up, down, 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 up, up. And again, I'm not down, up, down, down. I'm not thinking about that, but that's really what's happening because my hand is just doing this. Da, 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 da. See that? Da, 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 da. That's what would happen if I was just keeping this groove going. And then I'm going to end with the fifth string, and then these fourth string and third string again, together. So I have... Do you see that? Bear Trap says, do I think talent exists? I do. I just think even if you have natural talent, you still have to develop. It's all about development. And, you know, I mean, there's, there's singers out there that I know have natural talent. Um, but for guitar players, there, there's a natural element to things, but so much of it is psychological. It's how you're thinking about things and how you're mapping ideas out and, you know, synchronicity and all those sorts of things. I don't think all of that is just a natural talent. I think so much of that has to be processed. You know, your ability to process it might be the talent, right? Your ability to process those things. So Mike says, when you palm mute the strings, sounds like Hendrix. Yeah, yeah, and that's the thing is it's, it, you know, I'm, I'm trying not to, uh, you know, I don't want it to sound like that, right? So I've got my volume down a little bit. And when I play, you know, I'm trying to kind of mute the thicker strings while the thinner strings will kind of ring out. But again, I'm not, I'm not psychoanalyzing it. I'm just trying to kind of find a, a halfway point because I don't keep lifting my hand up to palm mute. It's just kind of sitting there on the fifth string. Yeah, you're welcome, Bear Trap. If that makes sense. So now if I speed it up a little bit. So now we kind of get that. Let me go back just for a second here. Let me see what we got here. Duke says, how are you playing that B power chord? 
well, I'm not sure what you mean. How am I playing it? I'm just I'm just playing it like this with my first third and my pinky. <laughs> And then what I do is after I strum these, and again, I'm not trying to be complicating, I'm just being honest with you. When I strum these two strings together at various times, I tend to kind of lift those fingers up a little bit so it stops ringing. So if I go, like right there, you'll, you'll kind of see me lift my fingers. Now, so much of this is a natural reaction when you've been playing a long time. so. Again, I want to make this as easy for you as possible, but please understand too that you just have to explore this a little bit. So when you're trying to learn a part like this, like for me, when I first started learning how to play, as a lot of people, when we first started learning how to play Thunderstruck, like when I was younger, it was all about this first part that I showed you. And that's what I would play. And that made sense in my brain because it was easier to think about, you know, maybe technically it's harder on some level, maybe, I don't know but it doesn't require me to feel it as much because it's da 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 it's, it's got an even um, subdivision to it, right? And I can practice pull-offs or picking or whatever and putting all of these in the right place. But this part, it is an entirely different kind of thing, right? So that's why I wanted to talk about this today so you could see how these two and for me, it's not an argument of which guitar player is better or what part is more important. It has nothing to do with any of that. It's the synergy between these two parts that makes it so amazing, okay? That these two brothers would write these parts and they sometimes would be playing the same thing and sometimes be doing things that are completely different. But from a practice perspective for you for the next week, think about whether or not you want to try and do some things like this uh, or if you want to try and focus on... And remember, start with just scratching. Right, just over and over and over doing that. And if for some reason, like what I tend to do, and I don't know if Malcolm's doing this, it, and again, it's a very small, subtle thing, but I just want to mention it. At the very end, you'll notice I'm putting a little pop, there's a space at the very end right there. So I have a tendency when I play this, I add another uh, fifth string palm mute. Right there. I don't know if it's in there. It just feels better to me to fill that space than to leave it. So I get this da 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 and it just it just feels more comfortable to me. You see? So Explore these in, in whatever capacity you feel the need to, whatever's going to work best for you. Um, if you've done that, that Thunderstruck Angus thing before, really try this and, and start learning. Because somebody had mentioned, I'm sorry I didn't see the name, but somebody had mentioned that Paul Gilbert had mentioned how important rhythm is. It is. And it's not just rhythm per se, like playing chords or something, which is all important. Don't get me wrong. It's learning to feel the groove. Like that's kind of the whole thing is, is, is sometimes when you play something like, and I'm not, I'm not disrespecting anything, but when you play something like, right, when you play that, it's more of a, a planned idea of what finger goes where with that rhythm. And it doesn't mean it doesn't have groove, don't get me wrong, but it's very different than something where you're trying to go, It's an entirely different kind of thing that can be done on the guitar. So they're both wonderful and I love all of it. So just always remember that my job isn't to sit here and try and sell you on some technique is better than something else or whatever it might be. I think they're all important. But when it comes to rhythm, I think it's those things that oftentimes people are lacking because you can look up the tab and you can memorize, right? You can memorize that more it's something that's a little bit easier to 
And again, I, I'm not saying it doesn't require elements of technique. Of course it does. But it's for some people, it's, it's a lot easier to do something like that than it is groove stuff. So maybe it's, it's that way for you and... Um, but maybe it's not. Let me see what, what Bear Trap's got here. He says, I never knew how horrible I was at rhythm. You know, it, it takes time. It, it just takes time to learn how to do these things. Uh, Fred says, cool how both parts tie to B. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's super cool for sure. Um, let's see here. Paul says, I think this is the same Paul. Great teacher, great guitarist. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Appreciate the kind words. Um, you know, and that's the trick is, is always remembering that on your journey of learning how to play guitar, it's easy to get caught in kind of one dimension of certain things that you practice, like scale shapes and metronome and things like that, and it's all good and it's all worth doing. But there's just something about groove and learning how to feel groove and learning how to play groove and learning how to interact with other musicians with groove, you know? You get a drummer playing and a bass player and you're doing your thing, and so I think Sometimes it's not just about playing the, the most obvious part that, like in this case with Angus's part, go ahead and learn it. Learn as much as you want of everything. But sometimes it's that other part that really substantiates the song and really supplies the backbone to what's happening to that, to that tune. So it's nice for us to, uh, to, to, to remind ourselves of that, okay? So everybody, take care, stay positive. Please do me a favor. If you're looking for any uh, lesson materials, you can check me out on YouTube and wherever. And you can always head over to guitarzoom.com, check out my guitar courses, the membership, that sort of thing. And most importantly, keep practicing. And of course, stay positive. And I will see you next Monday, okay?